Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is part 13 of our Learn Lightroom 5 video series and in this episode I'm going to talk about the Tone Curve panel in Lightroom 5. Before I do that though, if you guys could go below this video and click the subscribe button um, or if you could um, comment, like, and share the video, I, I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. I'm, I'm going to start out, I'm going to show you what the tone curve does on these gray bars. If you remember, I used the gray bars in the sharpening episode in episode 5. Um, first of all, the tone curve, um, as you see here, it's a linear line going from the lower left to the upper right, and below it, it has four sliders. Now, as you see, as I put my cursor above each slider, the corresponding part of the line gets highlighted. So it shows highlights are the upper right, lights are more in the middle to the upper right, darks are from the middle to the lower left, and shadows are the lower left. And similarly, if I drag across the, uh, the uh, tone curve itself, you'll see that those corresponding sliders get highlighted. So, you know, if you move this highlights up, the tone curve gets bent up. As you can see, down gets bent down. What most people do is they drag the curve itself. And a lot of people like to use the curve to add contrast. And to add contrast, you dial in what they call a, an S curve. So you pull down in this, you go up about a quarter from the lower left, and you da drag down a little bit. Then you go in a quarter of the way from the upper right, and you drag up. And you're kind of making a little S with the curve. And that adds contrast. Um, if you want to reset it, you could just double click each of these sliders or you go up and you could just double click the curve itself, but it's easier to double click the slider there. Um, if you want to dial in some preset contrast to begin with before you do anything else, you could go to the point curve. Right now it's linear, it's a straight line. You could do medium contrast which adds a very slight S to the curve or strong contrast which adds a stronger S to the curve. And you use that, of course, you know, if you want to add contrast to your photograph. A lot of people just use the tone curve for that. But the real power of the tone curve, in my opinion, is when you click this lower, this box in the lower right-hand corner, it just shows a line with a dot in the middle. Now this is more like curves in Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. And it starts out, um, it shows the channels. We're on the RGB channel to begin with. And this will do the similar thing. But in this case, you could add points. So I click there, I put a point there, and I click there, I put a point there. So I'm adding these points, and they're kind of like anchor points. If I grab in the middle of the lower two points I added, and I drag up, you could see now I'm adding um, like a brightness adjustment just mainly between those two curves and on either side of those two curves. And it it affects those way stronger than it does any of the other parts, the other sections of the uh, line. Now if you want to get rid of that point, just like Photoshop, you just grab it and drag it off and it's gone. Um, similarly with the highlights, if I drag up, it's going to make the highlights brighter. If I drag down, it makes the highlights darker. Get rid of it. Now that's when you're on the RGB channel, but let's say you want to just affect you know, uh, you want to add red. You don't want to just add brightness, you want to add red. So again, we'll, we'll add some of these points here. So I'm adding uh, two points in the lower quadrant, lower left quadrant, and two more points in the upper right quadrant. And now, when I drag up with the red, I'm adding red to the darker parts of the screen because I'm in the lower left quadrant. If I drag down, the complement of red is cyan, say, cyan, cyan, I never could say it. So it's C-Y-A-N, cyan. So bear with me on that. Um, <laughs> so anyways, that's what you're doing. You're adding complements. I also have an article on my website that explains a complementary colors, and I'll link to it below in the description of this video. And it's much better there because I know how to spell cyan, so I could just type it out and I don't have to say it. Um, so you could just take that point and get rid of it. Now go up in the upper right, and now this will only affect the highlights. I'll dr go up and I'm adding red. I go down and I'm adding cyan. Oh, I think I said it right that time. 
Now that's in the red channel. Let's say you want to go to the green channel and you could add these points again. So I add these points and now I want to add green. I drag up. I drag down. I add magenta which is the complementary color of green. Similarly up in the highlight area I could add green, drag down magenta. Go down to blue and you know the drill by now. I add these points and I'm going to be adding blue and the complement of blue is yellow although you don't really see it now because it's blending with the cyan I added and the magenta I added and all that other stuff. But why don't we go to a real photograph down here. Why don't I get rid of this panel so we got a little more room. And I'll show you the real power of all this. Um, in the RGB channel, well let's start out Let's start out with the the, uh, the just the linear curve like you would normally see when you open up a photograph. And if I want to make, I add a little contrast so I could pull this down a little bit and pull that up a little bit. So I made the darks darker and I made the lights a little lighter so it added a little contrast to the photograph. Now I'm going to go over to the the curve part of the tone curve and I'm going to, um, the RGB would do the same if I drag down here I'm adding, making the darks a little darker or a little lighter and I'm not going to mess with that so I'm going to get rid of that point by dragging it off. But let's say that the red flowers, I want to affect those. Now I could just go on this curve somewhere and drag it around and see what happens. But an easier way, or in my opinion a better way, see this little circular tick box here? click on that and then when you come out you'll see your cursor turned into what that box was. So I want to affect this these reds right here. So I'm in the red channel. I push down on my uh, mouse and if I drag up it's going to make the reds brighter so it's adding luminance to the reds. If I drag down it's making the reds darker so it's taking away the luminance on the reds. So see how that's pretty powerful? You could just go into the color channel you want to affect, use the tick box and go out on the image and drag it up and down to either make that color brighter or darker. And let's say the green. So I'm going to grab this tick box again and I'm going to go over in the green area here and I'm going to drag it up to make those green center parts of the flowers brighter or I could drag it down and make it darker. Now just like split toning, if you remember that episode in, in part 8, it's not going to just um, affect the green though. It's anything that's that same brightness level gets affected. Um, so you're adding green or taking away. You could really add some crazy things here. You could just keep adding points by clicking around and uh, you could make it a real bizarre looking photograph if you want, you know. But anyways, that's how you could do some kind of more micro adjustments by using the tone curve. Again, you just drag these things right off and then you get rid of them. You want to go back to the normal tone curve, you just click this box here and we're back to where, remember, I added um, some contrast to the photograph. So that's really it on the tone curve. Um, it is very powerful and a lot of people swear by using the tone curve. Personally, I don't use it as much as I probably should um, and probably I should resolve to myself actually to use it a little more because I probably could get some improvements on some photographs that I normally wouldn't get by just using any of the other panels. So I hope that helps you out. If you guys have any questions at all, you could always drop me an email at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and I will answer any questions you have. And again, if you guys could um, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and um, like and share the videos, I'd really appreciate it. And come over and visit the website, I'd really appreciate that too. And that's it until part 14, which I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing yet. I think I'm going to do another portrait in part 14. Um, so look for that within the week. And I appreciate everyone watching and I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed already. Take care.